Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about how to attempt IELTS reading module and this video is going to make a significant change in your performance. This is Noreen Akhtar and you are watching channel Flash Forward. Let's talk about the format first. IELTS reading test is of 60 minutes with 40 questions. You will have three long passages in IELTS academic and in IELTS general training, you will have five shorter passages. To get a band seven in IELTS academic, you need to answer 30 questions correct. For general training, 34 correct answers will lead to a band seven. There are more than nine types of questions you may come across. We'll come to the types in the later part of the video. Let me first share some techniques and strategies to get a good band score in test. Unlike listening, you won't get any extra time to transfer your answers to answer sheet. So you have to do everything in those 60 minutes. So when you are done with a certain section, first transfer the answers to answer sheet, then move to the next section. Don't plan to transfer all the answers at once because in the last few minutes, you always have some questions remaining to review. So spend that time on reviewing and solving the unanswered questions. If you will read the passage first and then come to the questions, by that time you will forget what you read. The best way is to first read the questions, then come to the passage. Find the answer, go back to question 2, come back to the passage again and find the answer and so on. This is the best way because you cannot memorize the text and it will save your time as well. However, there are some question types that are not in order, such as matching headings. To solve such questions, keep watching the video, I am coming to that in a while. Underline the key words in the questions and in the passage as well. Underline all the important dates, names, places, any important event that happened, names of theories, etc. It will be easier to locate them when finding answers. Especially read the last paragraph very carefully because usually the last paragraphs consist of the summary of the passage or the author's own final idea. And most of the times there is definitely at least one question whose answer lies in the last paragraph. Don't waste your time if you are struggling to find answer to any question. Just mark it and come to it later. Even if you are not finding answers to maybe five or six questions, don't panic. Leave that section. Go to the next section. You can come back later. Keeping yourself calm is very important. Develop your strategies for each type of question. You should know what's best for you, what works for you. In the exam, you shouldn't be thinking, should I read the question first or should I read the passage first? This is not the right time. Do a lot of practice and understand your way, then stick to that. Don't get confused by the complex words written. You will come across some words that you have heard the very first time in your life. You may not even understand a few lines in the paragraph completely. You may not even understand the idea that the author has tried to present. It doesn't matter. We are here to find the answer to the questions. Ignore all irrelevant information that could be in the text just to distract you or waste your time. Just understand the concept in general. Find the answer and go to the next question. Divide your time according to the difficulty level. Since I took a paper-based exam and the very first passage is comparatively easier, I always assigned myself 15 minutes for section 1, 15 for section 2 and 30 minutes for last section. And I achieved this target because I used to practice this way. First you practice without this timer pressure on you. Once you are done, then test yourself with the timer. The best way to improve your score is after completing the test, when you check your answers, investigate each incorrect answer and understand the reason that why you got it wrong. What was your approach and what's the actual
actual correct approach. Now let's go through some common types of questions. The first type is multiple choice questions. You will have a passage to read comprising of different paragraphs or maybe a single paragraph. And at the end, you need to answer the questions asked by choosing the right option. The good thing is questions are in order with the passage. So don't just begin by reading the complete passage, but instead read question one, then start reading the passage. Find and mark your answer. Then go to question two, resume reading the passage and find the answer and so on. Also keep crossing the incorrect options to make sure that you have reached the right option. Let's look at an example. If Mona Lisa was a famous novel, few people would bother to go to a museum to read the writer's actual manuscript rather than a printed reproduction. This might be explained by the fact that the novel has evolved precisely because of technological developments that made it possible to print out huge numbers of texts, whereas oil paintings have always been produced as unique objects. In addition, it could be argued that the practice of interpreting or reading each medium follows different conventions. Now the question we have is, according to the passage, what is the difference between a novel and a painting? The answer is in the third line which says, oil paintings have always been produced as unique objects. So the answer is C. Questions will not be always as simple as this was. Sometimes they would use synonyms or different phrases to confuse you. They would be saying the same thing in different words. The next type is true false not given questions. What you have to do in this type of questions is check if the statement says the same thing that is written in the passage. If yes, it is true. If it contradicts, it's false. And if there is nothing said about it or enough information is not provided to make a decision, it is not given. The example is, the Thames Tunnel was a tunnel built under the River Thames in London. It was the first tunnel ever built and many people exaggeratedly claimed it was the eighth wonder of the world at the time it was opened. It was opened in 1843 to pedestrians only and people came from far and wide to see the marvel. The day it was first opened, it attracted 5,000 people to enter the tunnel and walk its length of almost 400 meters. The first statement we have is, the Thames Tunnel was the first tunnel ever built under a water. You can see in the passage, it was the first tunnel ever built. So it shows that the statement is true. The second statement is, the Thames Tunnel was the eighth wonder of the world. Now look at the passage. Many believed it was the eighth wonder of the world at that time. So it was something that people believed at that time. So it was not a fact. Hence this statement is false. Third is, people were drawn from all over to see the Thames Tunnel. We have in the passage, drew people from far and wide. So this statement is true as well. The last statement is, the tunnel was used more by the middle and upper class. This passage does not state how much each class used the tunnel. So the answer is not given. In this type of questions, first read the statement, then start reading the text. You may be instructed to write yes, no instead of true, false. Don't make this blunder. You need to read the instructions very carefully. The next type is sentence completion. The easiest way to solve this type of questions is, again, first read the statement of blank to be filled. Underline the keyword, then come to the text and stop where the required information is given. Write the exact same word as it's in the text. 
be careful about s and es used or the numbers especially now look at this example sentence completion questions the type of random jittery movement of tiny particles is called the key words here are type of movement and they direct us to the third paragraph there we can see a phrase with the same meaning this very particular type of movement by then called brownian motion it refers to the movement of tiny particles described in the first two paragraphs so the answer is brownian motion the second question is einstein explained the phenomenon of particles strange motion by the fact that they were collapsing with the key words here are einstein explained the fourth paragraph tells us einstein's theory was that the particles from the polar grains were being moved around because they were constantly crashing into millions of tinier molecules of water look at the synonyms einstein theory is written as einstein explained crashing into collapsing with so you can see the correct answer is water molecules the next type is summary completion you will have a passage and a summary of that passage the same information is again written but in different words with some words missing and you have to fill them out to solve this read the line from summary then try finding the answer from the text if you find it difficult to find the answer go through the text again and again without taking the stress you may find the answer in your third or fourth attempt perhaps but you will find it as it is written in there now look at this example write no more than two words from the passage for your each answer consumers often complain that they experience a feeling of dash when trying to put together do it yourself products now read the passage the instructions accompanying do it yourself products are regularly cited as a source of unnecessary expense or frustration we have got the answer which is frustration let's continue reading the summary which have not been tested by companies on a dash now come back to the text few companies seem to test their instructions by having them followed by a first time user you know the answer first time user next is in situations where not keeping to the correct procedures could affect safety issues it is a especially important that dash information is not left out and no assumptions are made now see the text often essential information is omitted steps in the construction process are taken for granted and some degree of special knowledge is assumed so you have gotten the right answer essential the next type is short answer questions Step number 1 is read instructions. Step number 2 is read the questions and underline keywords. Step 3 is start reading the passage and skim it over to find the answer. Let's see an example. So instructions are write no more than 2 words from the passage for your answer. The question is which animal has the most fat the question is quite simple as the answer lies in the first sentence of the text as the largest animal in the world the blue whale also has the most fat so the answer is blue whale the next question is how is called tissue of marine mammals that is rich with fat After we have read the text we can see that fatty tissue of marine mammals was mentioned somewhere in the second passage we scan the second passage for the answer and we can see the line will begin with blubber the fat rich tissue belonging to marine mammals so blubber is the correct answer 
The next type is list of headings. You will be given a list of headings, maybe 9 to 10 headings and you have to choose the relevant or appropriate heading for the respective paragraph. Always go through the headings once or twice. Underline the keywords, then read the first paragraph and see which heading is suitable. Then go to the second, third and so on paragraphs. In this type of questions, the best way is to read a paragraph first, not the questions, unlike some previous types that we just discussed. Try to understand the idea presented in each paragraph because mostly the paragraphs will have different topics and different informations. Then write the idea in your own two to three words. For example, look at this text. This is how it looks like. Let's say that you read paragraph A and they were talking about the IQ levels around the world. Some survey results and researches done regarding that were the topic of this paragraph. Just write survey results and numbers. In paragraph B, they were talking about giving too much dictation to kids. Just write impact of excessive instructions or impact of excessive guidance. Now you have a question. Reference to what can be lost if learners are given too much guidance. You know where is the answer. You know that you read about it in paragraph B. Just read it again quickly for confirmation and yes, your answer is B. This is how you can increase the probability of getting correct answers. If you are unable to find the suitable heading, skip that paragraph and move to the next one. Then at the end, come back to the paragraph again and see if the last heading matches. If it still doesn't, you have made some mistake. Answer could be in the very first line. It doesn't imply that you stopped reading it. You must go through the full paragraph. Also, you have to underline the keywords like any date or name, place or any other important thing. For example, in the list of headings, let's say there is an option. Kevin Peter was confused about the first theory presented to the panel. Now, if you had underlined Kevin Peter's name in each paragraph, it will be easier to match the heading. Don't forget to write your answers in Roman numbers on answer sheet. In a nutshell, you need to develop strategies for each kind of question. For example, the technique for true, false and not given questions would be different. For multiple choice and matching headings, some other kind of techniques will be required. So these were my tips and ideas of improving reading score. Hope it works for you as well. Please subscribe my channel to remain updated. Take care. Bye bye.